Black Aaron Broadcast. It's the Black Aaron Podcast. It's the Black Aaron Broadcast. Check, check. You can hear me good? Yep. Excellent. Okay. Ooh. Welcome, listeners. We're posting a little early today, earlier than I usually do in the week, but for good reason. I have a special guest here, um, and I'm going to go ahead and give him a wonderful intro. And actually, hold on a second. I'm like, I'm messing up here. I got to share this to my page real quick uh, <laughs> before I and this guy. I'm all over the place, but um, let's see. So I'm just going to give him the intro. I can do that later. So today's guest is a music lover, DJ, and producer. Um, He's a seasoned and powerful public speaker and someone I've known for a while, but only recently reconnected with. Uh, He's a former professional network marketer at a major multi-level marketing organization called Nerium, where he was quite successful, but has since moved on to uh, greater things. He's an entrepreneur, he's a hustler, a former hairstylist, and certified in neural linguistic programming. Um, He's here to hang out uh, and talk about music, life, work, uh, whatever else comes up. Um, I respect this guy as an individual and a leader, Mr. Silver Fisher. (laughs) (laughs) You like that, man? Yeah, that was good. Ah, what it do, brother? Oh, just chilling, man. <laughs> Trying to find parking. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there is absolutely no parking at a uh, freaking school. It's just, I mean, if you come after a certain time, it's just crazy. Yeah, yeah. You got the, <sighs> the fiends out trying to uh, swipe your spots. I love it. I love it. You know? yeah. it, it. That's how you really dictate a person's personality is uh you know how they act when when a parking spot opens up and uh <laughs> two people are there at the same time you know are are they the aggressive type or are they the uh you know conscious passive uh you know individual that'll <laughs> say all right you you take the spot this time no i don't want it you take it you take it i've only yeah. been looking for the past uh, 30 40 yeah, minutes yeah. an hour but just exactly. take it exactly uh let's see here we go earlier in the week then i'm sorry let me just post that by the way i like the uh the misfits shirt there yeah bringing it back man yeah i got this uh i think a friend got this or i might have bought it it's Mm -hmm. supreme Ooh. oh okay yeah i mean i don't know really big on them they start selling bricks now with supreme logo on it and people buy it like like a A literal brick a cement brick so they're like uh all right pet rocks let's take it to the next level yeah that's exactly what it is sell a brick with a label on it your little pet consumer Wow. Buying concrete with a stamped, you know, logo of some, you know, and, corporation. And you know, people are standing in line at the pop up to to get it too, handing yeah. out bricks. Oh yeah, they <laughs> do. I live yeah. in L.A., man, and and you see those pop ups, you know, come out every once in a while, and and just oh, lines around the blocks. I actually know people uh, that do that. They stand in line, they get the the items that they wanted to get, and then mm-hmm. they resell them. For like three or four times the amount that they purchased them at the pop up, yeah, and that's their business. That's what they do for extra hustle side side money. Yeah, they can do like I know, I know people do that definitely with like the shoes and stuff. I mean, yeah. but you can do it with a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's just kind of what I see every once in a while and hear about. Yeah how how are you doing today, brother? I'm good. I'm a little tired. I, I like <laughs> to sleep in. You know, had to get up at nine. But uh, oh, to know, get here, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that you know, that's that's the uh, the cool thing is you know when you uh, are are hustling and you hustle long enough is you can wake up when you're done sleeping instead mm-hmm. of you know showing up and having to uh, go to a job and a mm-hmm. nine to five and someone telling you when you can eat, sleep, piss, you know, do all those things. So yeah, you know, it it becomes a choice. I mean, obviously, you know, I've spent many years hustling hard uh-huh. you know, waking up you know before everyone else going to bed after everybody else yeah you know doing those extra things so i can have extra things in the future you know yeah. what i mean so that's it's you know i like to sleep <laughs> sleep's a good thing no sleep is definitely a good thing and i'm glad you made it here man thanks for coming on the show yeah man. absolutely absolutely looking forward to it man. 
That is what's up. So, um, well, how did we how did we meet? There. 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 I've met so many people through there. Yeah, and uh, I don't even. Oh, you know. So my business, uh, being in. Well, let's just put it this way. All of my businesses, whether it was a club promoter, which I know you've kind of dabbled yeah, yeah, yeah. in, um, being a hairstylist mm -hmm. or being in network marketing are all based on building networks and building clientels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, my job is always constantly meeting new people, right? So mm -hmm. meeting cool people through people that I've met, right? Yeah. So as a club promoter, I'm like, hey, bring your friends to my club. You know, I think yeah. your style's really cool. You would fit in perfectly with my environment, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you invite your friends and then I meet people, right? Mm -hmm. Hairstylist, same thing. Oh, you like to get your hair done cool, mm -hmm. right? The type of hair I want to do. You know, tell your friends, invite three and I'll give you a free haircut. Yeah. Now I meet three new people, right? Same thing. And the network marketing is obviously all based on networking through other individuals, marketing them a product or a service that they get value out of and that they become a raving fan of and that they want to go out there and share themselves mm -hmm. and make income, you know, sharing the products and recruiting yeah. other people. So I think we, I, I met Thayer through somebody mm -hmm. and then he joined one of my companies mm -hmm. that I was participating in. And then I think he, uh, you guys were really tight at yeah, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. And so we're hanging out like I think he invited you out every day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> So it was inevitable that I would eventually meet you because I really liked there as well. Yeah, you know, there's cool. There's a strong, silent type. Yeah, know. something like <laughs> strong and I don't know. I call him strong and dumb. <laughs> you know, that, he's not dumb. He's just he just smiles a lot. He's yeah, like, yeah, asks yeah. him a question. He's like, eh. he's like perma stone, but not. Yeah, but not <laughs> not, not stone. Not right? actually stone. I know that, but but he just all. walks around like that. You know what I mean? Like smiley and just kind of like looking yeah. at life. And hey, it's a good way to live, man. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, let's see here. So um, what, because I'm curious, like what did it mean when you're at Nearum to be like a three-star, was it? Okay, marketing? national marketing director. What did that mean exactly? Because I saw that. I was like trying to do a little, re like yeah. make sure, because I thought you were still there, but then it was like former. So I was like, okay, so let me make sure I say yeah, former. Yeah, yeah. Like, so I know. moved on to another company mm -hmm. seven months ago. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing with network marketing is, you do your very best, especially as a professional in this industry, you do your very best to, um, you know, predict the company that is going to give you the greatest success for the longest amount of time. And, you know, everybody that joins a company like that hopes that it's going to be in business forever, right? Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in entrepreneurship and in business in general, you know, 90% of businesses fail within the first five years. Yeah, you know? all businesses. Yeah. yeah. And so that doesn't, you know, uh, that doesn't offset network marketing companies either. You know, a mm -hmm. lot of the companies that come into business don't continue to stay in business, yes. right? So um, anyway, I just wasn't necessarily uh, in alignment with where Nerium was going. going yeah. So I left seven months ago, you know, I did an hour, an hour, a year, an hour, a year worth of due diligence, flew around to different companies, met with owners, um, top earners, did a ton of due diligence. And I ended up in a company called Isagenics, which is a 16 year old company that's had 16 years of consecutive growth. Mm -hmm. So you know that this is a company that has a proven track record, they're okay. growing and they're going to continue to grow. So that all being said, um, you know, I started with that company Nerium, which was an anti-aging skincare company in 2011 when they launched. Mm -hmm. And, um, I thought it was a good match for me. Number one, because I knew all the people that were starting the company. I knew mm -hmm. the CEO from a previous venture. I knew the master distributor, mm -hmm. uh, that was there and some of my best friends had joined. Yeah. Right. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to partner up with this company. Right. Mm -hmm. Because as an ex hairstylist, I'm sure I can approach all these stylists that would want to offer skincare to their clientele. So it's another skincare? Yeah. No, uh, no, that, Nerium. I'm oh, Nerium, Nerium. Nerium. Okay. Nerium was this anti-aging skincare. And so mm -hmm. um, as you work up the ranks in that company, based on the amount of value and volume you bring to the company, mm -hmm. um, they move you up the ranks, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to basically build out your structure within mm -hmm. the organization, right? Mm -hmm. You get your three people they get their three people, people right? And so on and so forth. And yeah. then once you have that structure, it's based on a certain amount of volume that you bring to the company. So yeah. say each bottle sells for a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. okay? 
So that's a hundred dollars in volume your team is bringing. Yeah. Well, my team in six years did four hundred million dollars in sales. Yeah. Four hundred million. That's a huge amount, right? But based on my structure, uh, with that volume, um, I ended up in a position called three star, which basically earned me a uh, hundred thousand dollar cash bonus. Mm -hmm. um, the average income at that position was anywhere from you know forty to sixty five thousand dollars a month for okay. me. Okay, so with you know with something like that, what would you say? motivates you like does this what motivate you then mm -hmm. at new year does that the same thing that motivates you now or is it something different you know what i mean well the company i'm with now is a health and wellness company right mm -hmm. they, they focus on weight wellness they focus yeah. on uh performance like sports performance mm -hmm. and uh, just overall general health right okay and it's it's a bit it's a billion almost a billion dollar a year company right mm -hmm. so they've a proven track record of success but basically I aligned myself with this company because I looked at, you know, as a business mentality, business mindset, I'm yeah. always thinking, what does the next five years of my life look like? What does the next 10 years of my life look like? Right. What do I want in my life? Yeah. What kind of impact do I want to make in this world? Right. Yeah. As a business owner, you know, I can spend my time and energy doing anything I want, but I feel like what is going to make the biggest impact. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the cool thing about this industry is, you know, um, as a traditional entrepreneur, our goal is to go out and set up assets, right? That spit off cash flow, whether you work or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So say I go buy a, a McDonald's. Mm -hmm. I buy a McDonald's and that McDonald's is going to spit off cash flow, but it's only going to be one McDonald's. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about this industry and in network marketing, I go recruit one person. That one person can turn into 5,000 other people that are going to spit off, you know, okay. a little bit of cash flow too. So it's the only business that I know of that grows geometrically mm -hmm. with or without you, right? Yeah. Uh, once you get the ball rolling. So, mm -hmm. um, but you kind of have to keep those people motivated, like, you know what I mean? Cause they can't just get some people and then, I mean, you're hoping on, they're going to get more people, but also you're hoping that the people they get, get more people. Like, right. There, there is a methodology. Motivated. There is a methodology to it. Right. Yes. Yeah. We're definitely looking for self-motivated people. We're looking for motivators. Right. But here's the thing. Once you get a lot of people, these people are getting involved for their dreams. They're getting involved for their vision, their future and what they want to do. So they're self-employed within the company. They're in business for themselves, but not by themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. My job is to help motivate them, to help teach them the skill sets and to go out there and create success for themselves. But at a certain point, you know, it's like if I was teaching you to ride a bike at a certain point, you're going to know how to ride that yeah. bike for yourself. Right. And you're going to get the enjoyment of riding that bike with okay. or without me. Does so, that make sense? So yeah. they, they, they are getting the benefits of the business eventually mm -hmm. and they're teaching their team how to do it. And I don't have to teach them anymore because they're making enough money where they're like, Silver, I don't need you. If I do, I'll call on you, but I'm here. I'm doing this for me and my family now. Yeah. And that's where it becomes a passive asset for you once you get that person mm -hmm. up and running, trained, and learning the system of the company. Now, some people might look at it like, because I want to ask you, because I understand, I do understand what you do, and you're mm -hmm. one of the top, you know, you're like a more of a top tier person as far as, you know, speaking yeah. and the networking mm -hmm. and achieving, you know, greatness mm -hmm. within a multi-level yeah. marketing. But yeah. there's some people to be like, you know, aren't as motivated and they'll say, oh, isn't that some type of pyramid thing mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. this or that? And I mean, maybe the network structure looks like that. But yeah. if, like you're saying, people, you know, they are motivated to work and get, you know, maybe work towards their dreams through the proxy of this corporation mm -hmm. or this mm -hmm. organization, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it could work as great for them, but you know, more than likely there's going to be less people doing as well than other people. Like, well, it's just like in anything, right? There's true. how many people reach the top 1% mm -hmm. of any industry or, or, you know, any skill set mastery, people don't. right? Most people don't. Yeah. So here's the thing. Don't let it fool you. Mm -hmm. um, because a large amount of people come in and a small amount of people succeed. Mm -hmm. When I first saw this industry, I was 18 years old. My best friend had started in a company called mm -hmm. prepaid legal, which is now a company called legal shield. Mm -hmm. He started when he was 18 out of high school. He was my best friend. He took me to a meeting. 
everybody was all riled up and cheering and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, this is a cult. What did you join? Yeah. I was like, don't <laughs> talk to me about this. I feel like I'm an infomercial right now. Yeah. I was like, bro, <laughs> don't. Yeah. I was like, this is weird. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. Have success. I was a negative person towards it, right? Because I was yeah. like, this is just weird because I didn't understand it. Mm -hmm. And most people are negative towards things they don't understand, right? Yes. Uh, or, or they just, they, it's out of their comfort zone. And so they block it out and they move on. And then on the other hand of that, there's, uh, oh, I can start my own business. I can have the dream of having, you know, uh, passive cash flow, residual cash flow, and be a business owner and have leverage. Mm -hmm. And it only cost me 500 bucks to get started in my own business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing because it, cost them $500 to get started, they don't yeah. treat it like a million dollar business, mm -hmm. right? Most people spend $500 on a night they don't remember. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They, and so they don't treat it like the person that spent $100,000 on a traditional business or a million dollars on mm -hmm. a McDonald's, which most of them don't become profitable for five years. But if you come in with that mindset and you're willing to follow the company's system, this can pay you a million dollars. And I know that because I've made several million dollars in this industry. Yeah. And so I say that to say this, you know, uh, when I was 18, wasn't interested. Mm -hmm. My friend at 23, five years later came back to me and mm -hmm. said, Silver, I want to take you to Las Vegas. Yeah. I want to show you, uh, we're just going to go to a convention for a little bit, but I'm going to pay for everything, the room, mm -hmm. the drinks, everything. And at 23, I'm like, hell yeah, let's party, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we were at the convention for 12 hours a day, two days straight. Jesus Everybody Christ. suited and booted. But in that convention, I saw things and I met people that built my belief that this could happen for me. I saw people that looked like they couldn't, you know, tie their shoelaces making six and seven figures from home, you know? And I was like, if they could do this, I'm going to give this thing a shot, right? Mm -hmm. And when I got a better understanding of the concept, because what I found out is most people don't join this industry for two reasons. Number one, they don't have enough information to mm -hmm. make an informed decision. That mm -hmm. was me, right? Or number two is just the timing's not right in their life, right? They got all this other stuff going on and they mm -hmm. go, I can't cut out the time to mm -hmm. make this thing happen. And so um, anyways, I ended up getting started in that company. Yeah. And now look, I was a hairstylist, 23 years old, purple hair down to my nose. Not, I was kind of in that motivatable category where it's like, yeah, I get hyped for things for like 90 days or even a month. And then I would be like, oh, on to the next thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. that's most people's mentality, right? 60% of society is like, rah, rah, I get it. I want to be involved in something like this. And then 90 days when they find out it takes work, it takes dedication, it takes learning a skill set, they're out, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so what we do is we learn to uh, create a environment that helps people grow through that and mm -hmm. stick and that's why this is called relationship marketing or network mm -hmm. marketing because it's based on relationships, right? Mm -hmm. if, if I can get you to start making a little bit of money, I can get you to see the bigger picture of this company and that it's possible mm -hmm. for you, you're going to stick in longer. And so there's a lot of little facets to this business, but I'll tell you, you know, um, after three years, I started making a like, decent check, seven grand a month. Mm -hmm. And then uh, within another couple of years, uh, you know, started making a six figure income. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think it was 2013 mm -hmm. made my first million, you know, what you uh, do with all that money, silver, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, there's many routes that you can take with money, right? Mm -hmm. You can say, Hey, I don't want to give that much to the government. So I'm going to invest it back in my business, mm -hmm. travel with the highest travel expenses, mm -hmm. I had some nice vacations, workcations, right? Yeah, where yeah. I'm working on the vacation, um, investing in my team, going to nice dinners and things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you, you know, save as much money as possible, okay. pay the tax man, and you take that money uh, that's left and mm -hmm. reinvest it in something else, right? Okay. I had the mentality that this business and check was going to continue to grow. So I reinvested a lot of it back into my team and my business and mm -hmm. lived really nicely for several years, you know, uh, but I worked hard in that company for three years and I collected a check for almost seven, you know, mm -hmm. so that is really the cool benefit of a, of a business like this. And then if you find the right company, mm -hmm. that check can last even longer. Um, like my mentors that I'm, I'm working with right now, they're 30 years old, making $2 million a year. And they've been, you know, made her first million within their th three years. Mm -hmm. And for the last five, they've been making over a million a year. Now they're creeping up on the top earners in the company at 30 years old. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're doing the right things with their money, you know? 
So it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's, it's interesting to see mm-hmm. uh, what this business can provide when you yeah. are aligned with the right company mm-hmm. and the lives that are transformed through the products if they're good products. Because yeah. unfortunately, like I said, there's a lot of gimmicky stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, we got this you know, magic uh, sauce that a zebra pissed on a tree and uh, <laughs> only we have the, uh, you know, the, the, the licensing for this special sauce that comes off this tree and nobody else has it and that's a lot of the time what you hear right like is these gimmicky Mm -hmm. things that (laughs) that it's a marketing gimmick you know yeah yeah, yeah. and that's why people say it's a pyramid or it doesn't work because they spend their 500 dollars to get in and um they either get involved in a bad company or they don't do the work and because it's a low barrier to entry um you know they don't give it the time and dedication that a normal business would take mm-hmm. and so they go out and they tell all their friends oh i spent that 500 bucks and you know those things don't work well i'll be the first one to tell you they do work because mm-hmm. i've made millions and i've seen tons of my friends yeah. in other companies make millions and millions and millions of dollars mm-hmm. but just like you said like anything it takes time mm-hmm. it takes effort to get to the top one yeah, percent yeah, yeah you know and you got to find someone that you can model Mm -hmm. right? It's like, if you can learn uh, basketball, would you want to learn from Kobe Bryant or or LeBron James or Michael Jordan? It's like, yeah, you'd want to team up with someone like that because they're going to be able to teach you faster and better Mm -hmm. than, you know, you learning basketball from your best friend. Okay. You know? So you're deep in, (laughs) you are deep in the game. Super deep, bro. You're deep. You were in you were, you got in at 18 and <laughs> 23, 23. I saw it at 18. You saw it at 18. But you got waited five years. Yeah. To yeah. Do you mind me asking how old you are now? 36. 36. Jeez. Mm-hmm. So you're deep in the game. There's nothing. Yeah. 14 years, man. Damn, bro. Yeah. That's fucking <laughs> commitment. I mean, most people can't commit to like anything that long. That's crazy, bro. Well, the funny thing is, is they commit to a job yeah. that, you know, like I said, someone else is telling them when they can go on vacation, when they can go to the bathroom, how they dictate to take how much they make. And you know what? The world needs employees. There's nothing wrong with there's that. No, there's no way you around know? that. You need a good people need base. security. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, you know, there's other people that need, yeah. you know, freedom. They need the ability to be their own boss yes. and go out there. Yes. But that's why this business works so cool too, is because mm-hmm. it's a side hustle for most people. Mm-hmm. They work their job full time and they work their business part time five hours a week wrapped around what they do. And because they're recruiting other people, they're going out there and um, it starts to compound. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The world's first recorded billionaire said, I'd rather have one percent of 100 people's efforts than 100 percent of my own. Right. Because those 100 people, even though they're given one percent, now it replaces my effort. Right. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. That, so that makes sense. You know, that's what this whole business model is based on is I'm working at five hours a week, just me. Right. Mm -hmm. But then I go recruit five of my friends that are put in five hours a week. Now I got 25 hours working in my favor that I get paid for because I created the relationship with the company. Mm. But most people that are, like I said, employee, they're trading their time for money. So they don't understand the concept of leverage. But that's why that, you know, only one percent of the United States makes over four hundred thousand dollars a year. Because they don't understand the concept of leverage. They don't understand the concept of residual income, doing something one time and getting paid over and over and over month in, month out on the anniversary of that sale. Yeah. Right. Like when I was a hairstylist, it's like I cut your hair, come back next month to cut your hair again. But if I get sick, if I want to go on vacation, Mm -hmm. I don't get paid. Right. So this model is based on the fact that it would be like if I cut your hair once. I never did it again, but next month I got 10 cents Mm -hmm. because I cut your hair once. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you look at insurance companies, you look at phone companies, something that you're paying your monthly bill, somebody's getting paid on that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, someone that started that company. And so, you know, as an entrepreneur, I've learned to seek out models, business models that I can align myself with that are going to give me a small percentage that compounds over time. Mm -hmm um versus trading my time for money now yeah you know and that's really the only difference man is is i understand that society uh the the wealth Mm -hmm. works like a farm you go out and you plant seeds right you water them you wait for the harvest and over time it grows a plant that 
grows fruit and then those seeds fall off into the ground yeah. and you have a harvest you're the one with the uh the farm yeah hiring other people to tend to your field you know yeah so you, it's intense <laughs> yeah it is intense so when you started when when i met you and you originally started <laughs> doing this you were working with uh Brittany. Mm -hmm. and like do, did you guys did you guys like tandem in like how did that partnership work like how did that like because you guys built it to get like a lot of that stuff together or right so just like any business partnership i mean that was my ex-girlfriend mm -hmm. right of seven years and uh she actually got recruited into the first company that i was involved with okay. prepaid legal and um you know that's kind of one of the perks of of being one of the speakers there too uh -huh. is you know someone gets recruited in and oh through you're, speaking you well no they, they, you know you've come to the meetings right uh -huh. so uh, it's there's always a new influx of people that come out to the meetings yeah. right and uh as a single guy at that time yeah there's girls that come in there and if you're the speaker yeah. and you know girls want to be with a guy who's a hustler and that's on stage and doing the <laughs> thing right yeah so it was kind of the pick a little, little litter and she was one of the individuals she was 19 mm -hmm. a sorority girl not really knowing the direction she wanted to take with her life. Yeah. I met her at that point and uh, we became boyfriend and girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We had stayed together for three or four years. Then Miriam came into our life and she was my partner. You know, I yeah. was the recruiter, I was the builder. And just by her being around me, someone who had been in the business for four or five years yeah, at yeah, that yeah. point. She learned the skill sets because she's around me 24-7. For sure. Right? So she just kind of picked But up. she made up a lot of the skill sets that I sh – she was a support for me. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, I was the recruiter. I was the driver. But yeah. she would spend an hour on the phone with someone training them. Oh, wow. And doing those types of things, right, that helped support and made my efforts worth 10 times more, it, right? It, and so added. that's how the partnership really worked. But uh, apart – the skill sets, um, you know, they just don't happen as quickly it's, and compound. It's like as a much. synergy when you. It guys, was a synergy where two we, minds come together and create a third, more powerful mind. Yeah, yeah. you, you kind of, you were recruiting people, and she would kind of sustain maybe some of those. Sure. And relationships by training, I sure. guess. And, yeah, exactly. And you know, um, you know, if you're out there working with females and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. It, there's a feminine touch that's added by okay. having a, a boyfriend, girlfriend team, a husband, wife team. It looks good. It feels good. It's like, right. oh, they're doing it. They're doing right. this. They're working together. You know, right. Maybe and if your energy doesn't flow with that person, mm -hmm. then you have your partner. That energy might flow a little bit better, yeah. right? Give them a little bit of a softer touch. Yeah. And so it, it ended up working to our advantage mm -hmm. where she had her own position in the company that mm -hmm. we built together. I had my own position in the company and, um, you know, we made a lot of money, a lot of money. I, like I said, 2 million bucks over the course of a couple of years. So, yeah. Yeah. And was it, and you know, obviously if you don't want to talk about it, it's fine. Yeah, but it. I mean, I'm personally curious, was it more, was it like just you guys that didn't work out or was it just the company like just working together or there was a lot of factors. So her and I ended up splitting. Yeah, because right. when I've met you guys, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I was yeah, like, we seem inseparable, is... right? Yeah, yeah, I was just like, I like these guys. Like, yeah. the energy, just, I just like the way she talked to me. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And <laughs> Everybody I like, did. <laughs> yeah, and I liked your, you know, I just yeah. like you. You're, you're energetic, yeah. you know? Like, I, I was telling you before the show, like, I like to have people on that are doing things. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, we yeah. haven't hung out in a while, but I can see you're doing stuff. And yeah, like, yeah. hey, let's talk about it. What are you doing? Come yeah. on the show. Let's talk about it. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm curious. You yeah. know what I mean? Just like it was, you know, because I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Was it just working too much together, or is it just like? Well, look, you ask any couple. Yes. N you know, not a, only is it difficult to to just maintain a relationship. Mm -hmm. Period but working together 24 seven, mm -hmm. because here's the thing, this type of business is a 24 seven type of business, yeah. right? Like granted, I make the rules about when I answer my phone, what meetings I set and I show up to, yeah. but if you're in hustle mode, right? You're doing that a lot, especially if you're in momentum, right? Mm -hmm. So not only are you trying to make life work and, and, um, you know, maintain an intimate relationship and all yeah. these things, 
but now you're working together on a daily basis. Yeah. Right. You start to lose some of the essence of polarity because you have to work Balance. because yeah. you have to work in cooperation so much. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it this way. Sexuality is based on polar opposite energy, right? Feminine energy, masculine energy. Yeah. When you're constantly working in cooperation with yeah. someone in a business, yeah. That starts to dissipate, Did right? You read the Superior Way Man. Way the Superior Man, bro. That's my favorite <laughs> book, bro. That's my favorite Way book. Way of the Superior Man. I just I probably getting... recommended that to you, dude. I no, I, I am <laughs> a preacher of that book, bro. I am a preacher of that book. That's I, my favorite I actually, book in the world. That's so funny because I like I've always dibbled and dabbled. I like to. I, I would call myself a hoarder of information and like For files, sure. music and sure. audio books and old texts and new texts, anything I can get my hands on for free, usually digitally and just sure. store it on a hard drive. For and sure. then I can just go back into my little library whenever I want movies, videos, audio uh -huh. tapes. Uh -huh. And I start listening to that. Yeah. And I was like, Oh God, am I going to like this? I'm like listening to the way he talks and stuff. But then he started saying stuff. And then my wife was listening too. Yeah. And we we're like, I was kind of laughing and I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, is that you or this yeah. and polarity? Yeah. yeah. And we have a, it's really, it's really funny because I guess I'm going off on a little bit of a tangent, but it's, okay. it's super funny because like, she's like, it's weird. Like we have, obviously I'm more, um, we're not, we're not traditional, you know, we don't have a traditional relationship necessarily, mm -hmm. but she does want to play the role of, you know, mom and mm -hmm. wife and make sure I'm happy. And I do want to be mm -hmm. like, you know, protector and provider sure. and stuff. But, you know, we don't necessarily switch. But like you said, the synergy thing, we do have a synergy. So she's good with like finances, mm -hmm. you know, and saving mm -hmm. and making sure, you know, bills are sure. paid, but yeah. also not spending money on stupid stuff yep. that typically yep. I would have. Like where my energy now, like at 35, like I still have plenty of energy, like workout and stuff. But I'm not like I don't have to run down the streets and drink and party. So now it's like tone that down, focus it in like school, marriage, you know, got a kid now. And just, you know, what can we do um, for the future? So that, sorry, that's, it just made me think about it because you're talking about polarity and stuff and the fem masculine and feminine. I was like superior man. And then I was thinking about my wife and our relationships. I just thought that was super funny. You did, you did read the book because those terms, I was like, ah, okay. I told you, bro, I've, <laughs> I've read probably 500 books over the course of the last 14 you, years. 500 500 books over how many years? 14. Okay, so that's how much is that? I don't do math. Uh, 500 divided by it's 14. Like maybe 20 a year. So okay, yeah, yeah, that seems that seems about right. Wait, wait, hold on. Let's do. Can I? <laughs> let's do the math on that. But the <laughs> anyway. Um, so let's just cut back uh, for whatever. your listeners so they know what we're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. It's a book called the way of the superior man and it sounds kind of like chauvinistic but it's it not it does sound like that it's not at all it's by yeah. an author called david dita and out of the books that i've read mm -hmm. it has become the most powerful influencing book in my life um really know, the most powerful i mean i didn't know who i was as a man you know we don't have rights of passage as men in an american society in other well we used to we used i would to. say we used to but like, not today man were, like, in a modern society yeah it's a little like i would say like kind of and i mean you don't want to define you know masculine like uh you know men specifically maybe a uh, rite of passage to becoming like from boy to man mm -hmm. you wouldn't want to have to define it through things like war but you know like say like the vietnam war whether you're fighting in it or maybe you're protesting against it or even world war ii you know what i mean mm -hmm. where people fought in wars and they're mm -hmm. maybe prideful or they got drafted you know that was a thing you had to do some you know man shit you know to yep. you and people might have respected you or even if they didn't respect you, like, fuck you, you know, this yep. is what I did. And this is my nowadays. I feel like in America, we are so like people are so privileged, like they don't even know about wars going on and the sacrifices being made. And I'm trust me, I served in the military and like I didn't I wasn't in combat like overseas. But I had friends, you know, that maybe didn't come back the same way. And I I, I work with vets and stuff, you know what I mean? And yeah. I have vet friends. So. Mm -hmm. It, you know, it changes things. And I don't necessarily agree with a lot of stuff we're doing. Like I have a different perspective of looking at it. But today, like a lot of youth, they, they have so much opportunity to whether they want to pay attention to something or not be aware of it. 
or, you know, start a business, you know, you want to get into multi-level marketing and be hella motivated, you know, at 18 or 23, you can do it. You know, you could work at Starbucks, nothing wrong with Starbucks. You can, you can get, be on YouTube, be a freaking YouTube star, get income like that. Like, you know, maybe you could sit at your parents or whatever and live off their income. Like, and I mean, that's just like this, as far as what you can do with your, your life. There's not, but they're not forced. I feel like men today, you know, are not forced into any necessary like manhood. You know what I mean? They're not. We, there's, unfortunately, not, there's not a lot of even leaders on, I don't know, TV. And I think it contorts everything. A lot of the reality and the celebrity and who the stars are and who the leaders are, or who people get the most lens and media focuses on. America's soft, not, man. America's soft. You know, yeah, it's you, just retar- you, it's just like you look crazy. at the, where the most successful uh, periods of society have come from and they've come from the greatest the times of greatest hardship right mm-hmm. like stress is good for the body in mm-hmm. certain amounts right yeah. and the same thing with a generation you look at you know what made america great or or to get to the point where we're at is you know people were you know discovering a new land they were you know setting an industrial foundation they were working hard they were working their ass off yeah they you know were fighting wars and now we're worried about you know did i get soy milk or regular milk in my latte you know and uh. it's it's unfortunate <laughs> but you know that's really what it's it, at in that's my opinion really where it's at man it's going to lead to the demise of the united states i mean we live in this outraged society of where People are focused on such non-important stuff uh, in their life because they've never tasted a hardship. You never, know? Um, never tasted hardship. But you look at like our grandparents, you know, the things yeah. they had to go through yeah, or, gran- or our great grandparents. They both you know? fought in war. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, bro. Um, the society we live in now, but that's going back to that book you know, at 18 years old, I didn't know who I was as a man, Mm -hmm. you know, what my role was. And I knew I wanted a a successful relationship in my life, Mm -hmm. but it was like, who am I in a relationship? Right. What role do I play? We want a a significant other in our life. Yes. Right. But we spend no time um, studying successful relationships. You know, someone spent their whole life learning something and writing a book about it that you can read in a matter of a couple hours, right? They spent their whole life learning these subjects and you can read it in two hours or you can go out there and figure it out yourself and fail a bunch and spend, (laughs) waste your whole life. That's what made a lot of sense to me. uh, What my mentor told me, you know, Silver, you can read these books and be much further ahead than everyone else in life Mm -hmm. if you, you know, learn this information because now you're living 500 lifetimes of information because these people all spent that time gathering this information, right? Yeah. Where most people, after they get out of college or high school, they never read another book in their life, not to improve their life. Um, maybe they read 50 shades of gray or something. Trash, trash, but, but it's trash, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I, it's funny because, you know, people would look at me on stage and be like, silver, you're so wise for your age. And it's like, yeah, this is hard work. Yeah. This is, you know, dedication. This is a, a dedication to growth, a dedication to contribution. And, you know, the things that I do are not hard to do. They're simple things, but easy things and simple things are easy to do and also easy not, not to, to do, do, right? Yes. So it's easy to eat the salad instead of the hamburger every single day. Uh, you're not going to, it's going to make no difference in the act of me doing it, right? But five years compounded there's going to be a hell of a difference between the dude that ate the salads and the dudes that ate the hamburgers every day. Right. Mm -hmm. Don't you agree? They're going to look completely different physically. There's going to be a lot of difference in the people that read books every single day versus the people that don't read books and they spend Mm -hmm. their time watching trash on TV or on social media. They're going to end up in a completely different place. So the principles of success are not difficult. They're very simple, but, we live in a microwave society. We live in an instant gratification society. People Mm want to feel good now. And so here's the thing is you can either pay to play now and feel good later. Right. Or you can feel good now and have that pain later, you know? Mm -hmm. So me, 
I, I started surrounding myself with the people that are doing the right things or what I believe to be the right like things because I wanted to be in the 1%, man. Yeah. You know? Um, and, and most people would have looked at me at 23 with purple hair down on my nose and been like, that kid's a write off. You know, he, he's, he's not going to be successful in life or, or maybe he'll just be, you know, one of everybody else. But yeah, I started to hang out with people with different philosophies and different mindsets. And I said, you know, I want to be in this, this 1%. Yeah. And you know, it's crazy. The associations I have now, I mean, uh, hanging out with multi multi millionaires and you granted money's not everything, but the level of contribution that these people are giving, you know, this girl that I was, uh, this girl and her husband and wife, uh, team that I was hanging out with last night, mm -hmm. you know, they're building, um, they're building cities or villages in Uganda at 30 years old. They're, they make enough money to mm -hmm. pay all their bills, have a Bentley, have an apartment on the water, um, in Santa Monica mm -hmm. and build villages in Uganda. It's like, what kind of life of contribution, what kind of life of greatness is that to be able to do that just from a few simple activities that you're willing to commit to daily? Two things. Two things, because you did in my uh, in the pre-interview questions, you mentioned uh, love and service. Mm -hmm. And and the other thing, and I want to ask this one first, because that's great that they're doing that. Yeah. But I always I always because I have like um, I have a I guess my wife's <laughs> stepdad's grandma. She goes to like Uganda with her daughter mm -hmm. and like they do stuff over there. And I think that's great. What do you think about the contrast between like people doing stuff here versus you know in america where people sure. need help too sure first going all the way to like another country like what do you do you have any opinions on that because absolutely I, okay the world needs help i think yes. people should go where their heart is calling them because then they'll do you know it'll be because they're doing it out of passion yes they're doing it out of passion okay. but, it's, but it also it's contribution right like mm -hmm. wherever you want to give give right bottom line is better than not giving Yes. Some people are called to give here in the United States, right? Their philosophy is, look, we have kids that are hungry down the street and, you know, we need to fix that first before we go and help other countries. But the fact is, is like it or not, we're all the same, right? We're the human race. We are one soul and we need to help where we can help just in general. Mm -hmm. And so I believe people should go where their heart calls, you know, yeah. more so than anything. But yeah, I mean, I think you're right. Everybody needs help everywhere but yeah. some people are going to be of service here locally right yeah because it's like i think about that and it's like it's great that they're giving you know what i mean because i'll you know i'll read different stories or watch stories mm -hmm. about people in other countries there's amazing people that live in the worst poorest communities but mm -hmm. that you know are developing is like learn to be like do some type of engineering or providing power for mm -hmm. their own place and people come in there and provide resources maybe from you know the western mm -hmm. world and stuff and that's amazing but then i just because I'm curious and I have questions, mm -hmm. I'm just like, if that same person was like down the block from your house, I wonder if you would help them if you saw them. Wait, here, here's the thing. You know what I mean? Too. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't know the answer to these. And you're right. Like compassion, like you have to do it where you feel it. You have to mm -hmm. let your, and if their heart leads them to there, that's good. You can't like tell people, oh, you need to stay in America mm -hmm. and do that. I don't believe that. But my mind is curious, like, geez, well, you know, I mean, that's just, you know what I mean? Here's the crazy part, man, is 60% of the world lives off less than $2 a day. 60% mm -hmm. of the world. I don't care who you are in the United States. There's resources for food. There's resources for shelter. Yes. And I, the poorest of the poor in America is not comparable to the middle class in some countries. Not even You know what I mean? Close. So yeah, when people say, you know, we need to fix what's happening here in America, yeah, it's a different type of fixing than, you know, say even the poorest of poor in Mexico, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting because you, you are right about that too. Because I think about, I think about stuff like, and I had this conversation with my friend, uh, Bill, who's an extraordinary, uh, salesman. He lives up in Washington now. Mm -hmm. And I do have a few friends that for whatever reason, even like yourself, like really good sales mm -hmm. like talking people sure. like they're always at the top right percent you're you're one of them there's like another sure. guy dave he does uh real estate always he gets this guy and i need to get him on the show he'll get recruited because his name's always on the loan paperwork from other real estate companies to come over and they'll they, you know what i mean they'll they'll signing bonus him on to their company crazy stuff but the thing um 
God, I got off track. But the thing I wanted to uh, I wanted to say because we're talking about we're talking about oh the poor is to the poor. Like in the U.S., like I I always and I had the conversation with my friend Bill as I think about like if I had nothing, like say I just have the shirt on my back and jeans and flip flops or sneakers, like because like our society is so rich, like I could still I feel like I could still navigate around and figure out a way to survive and work my way up, whether, you know, go to food places, mm-hmm. like even the dumpster, they throw out mm-hmm. whole entire, mm-hmm. you know, all good food. Like people, you know, people will give you change money. You could get, if you look good in our society, like you got a clean cut, you got a suit for the day, whatever, you can go and get a job or, you know, or don't even get a job. I mean, not to do that, but you could swindle people. Like if you look like, <laughs> it's like you're this close to, you know success we got we got a lot of programs if you can run your mouth yeah i mean we got a lot of programs here in the united states that support people Mm -hmm. and like government programs too yeah that's why that's why you know some people are called to the poorest of the poor in other countries you know they Uh, don't have that type of government there is that philosophy that we should spend it here in the u.s but exactly what you're saying you could walk down the street dig in a dumpster and find you know a week's worth of food Whereas in Uganda, it's like you don't even they, have water. <laughs> they don't have water, bro. Water, the the basic things that we take for granted. And so, yeah. you know, all I was saying in in that capacity mm-hmm. is that's the level of people I like to associate with, where their mentality is at a place of contribution. Mm-hmm. They they have a vision for them their lives, and they're not just a pinball in in the pinball game of mm-hmm. of the marketing. Uh, you know demagogues that are out there yeah (laughs) you know letting because here's the thing if you don't choose consciously where you're going and what you want to do with your life someone else will choose it for you you know and and you may not even know it but you're you know every piece of information you're putting in your mind Mm -hmm. not even consciously like we're being marketed to over something like over 4,000 times a day and we don't even know it, right? Whether it's a McDonald's logo, whether it's a, you know, Coca-Cola on the side of a a soccer game that we're watching. It's like, if you're not consciously choosing where you put information for your mind and directing, you know, where you're going, Mm -hmm. someone else is doing it for you. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, these giant corporations are set up to do that, to, to direct the masses to purchase and to be a part of their, uh, you know, army, basically they're, yes. pur- they're, they're purchasing armies, they're purchasing slave army. True. That's out True. there. You know, we live in a world of modern slavery through the dollar. True. If we want to get real deep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I try I mean, I try to not talk, get like all into that kind of stuff with people because like, I mean, my wife, she's like, oh, you're getting on your soapbox now about this, that, and other, you know, the world. And and it's just, it's so funny because, like, when I was out partying and stuff and just, like, drinking more and just kicking it, I didn't think about anything. I was just like, where, you know, where's the girls? Where's the party? Let's do it. You know, let's start it's the majority day. majority of people, bro. You know what I mean? And then once I was like, God, this is getting kind of like, uh, this is kind of getting boring or, like, empty. I need to do more stuff. You know, and it start, you know, just start reading more, researching stuff. And it's just like you start reading just like even history. You're like, like, for instance, like I'm reading a book. Um, it's called Endless Enemies by some guy, something kidney. And it's about like uh, the United States and their foreign policy. And like they go back, like how we kind of governments like operate, you know, in corporations and they go into countries and try to get them, you know, to take loans from like the IMF and, you know, then like other, you know, they get how those loans get enforced, you know, in the governments, like say like poor African countries, like the governments, they get the money and stuff, but the resource, those resources never trickle down to the actual people, like where the people may not even know their gut, they have no idea whether there's like a coup and some people take over or military takes over, like they, they're so far, um, detached but like the type of history i'm talking about is like say for like every, like they talk about like iran or something and like oh iran and you know why do they they hate us they hate our american way but then like a lot of things what the book talks about is like places like say iran like i think it was 53 or 54 they had a democratic election but you know and it's documented that we went in there and you know we upset it you know and 
that guy ended up dying or whatever. And we installed some dictator guy, some uh, Saudi something, I don't know, or whatever. And it's easier for us to kind of get to, I guess, like, you know, government corporation kind of get to their objectives if there are dictators in place because their their businesses aren't obstructed. There's less asking and more telling and they can say if it comes down to it, oh, we need to use force to go in there. And and it's a little more complicated because the book really breaks it down well better than I'm explaining it. And when you read about if you go back and like read into every every military, um, every time America interventioned on, you know, in another country and just read both sides or all sides, just it is crazy. It's yeah. like nothing. It's <laughs> never anything at all what you think it is, what mm. you originally or what they taught you in school or never. Well, the thing is, is most people aren't even going that deep. bro. They're, they're just they're <laughs> they, not. But they I don't just, even think about that kind of stuff. I, I was just like curious. And then once like you read one thing and you're like, what? It's like, yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. I thought it was this. It's that. It's it is just it's just not that simple. Mm-hmm. The way the world actually operates, the way mm-hmm. the world actually operates makes um it makes a lot more oh, sense. Look at Why? you, Mr. Fix It Man. <laughs> God. We're back, man. Uh video cut off unexpectedly. So I guess I'll either have to merge. I can merge these two videos together. I just download them at home. Okay. And merge them back. But um That was God saying you need to stop talking about what you're talking about. Dude, they probably the <laughs> algorithms probably was like, You're talking too much. I mean, if uh-huh. we're talking about Facebook, just yesterday I was watching um what is his name? He's like some kind of independent news journalist guy. And he was just talking about if I could let me just see. He was just talking about how like they purge like <laughs> 800 pages on Facebook. And I was like, mm-hmm. no, they didn't. And then I looked because I follow all that like anti media, this and that, mm-hmm. you know, stuff. Yep. And yeah, it looked like they did. None of my favorite sites, the free thought project and all this stuff. I'm mm-hmm. trying to think where is it? Ben Swan, this guy, Andrew, uh, whatever. Yeah. And I was like, wow, dude, they really just out here because free speech does not necessarily apply to these privately owned corporations when you're trying you think you're using your free speech on their platform but they're like no 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 that's you know that kind of you know our you know as far as our objectives and our goals and stuff go that doesn't really jive you're getting a little bit too much traction you, yeah. you know it's interesting how yeah social media has changed the platform of free speech right it's 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 been monetized and privatized right but there's also the polarity uh of you know you can do massive good with it and then yeah. there's the people that will you know be a part of that outraged society where they're you know everything's uh, racist or everything's sexist and everything's yeah. this and and it it's just kind of ridiculous um you know as they're sitting at home sipping on their starbucks latte you know complaining about uh <laughs> how someone posted x and now it's completely ruining somebody's life because it's taken away their job <sighs> because they threw up a tweet that was taken out of context and yeah. you know it's it's crazy man but uh you know influence is a delicate thing and influence is a delicate thing once you and most people will never understand this right because they'll never build a following or they'll never they'll never have thousands of eyes watching them yeah um but you know in that process if someone ever gets to that point you know you have a responsibility uh to to what you do with that power mm-hmm. right um because it is it is power. it's a responsibility and it's a power right you could rally people you can um cause them to buy certain things right mm-hmm. you can you can lead them influence them to gather in a certain area yeah i mean influence and social media people with these followings um you can do crazy stuff i mean look at these yeah. these rappers they'll post that they have a pop-up shop in la and, and it'll drive blocks. a bunch of people to to purchasing you know yeah that's why in like record companies these new artists they do something called a 360 deal where they oh yeah they, they don't can. just make money off the music anymore they make money off of everything that that artist does the merchandise because the shows, everything. you know 
and and here's the thing you have all these people becoming famous that are just relevant right um you know that that uh catch me outside girl or whatever it's like she's a rapper now why because she's got a bunch of people watching her on um you know twitter and and instagram and and youtube yes and so now she's a rapper right it's like you're it's society's no longer about you know what is your talent it's about how many eyes are watching you and how do we monetize it that's it that's all these businesses care about right so we we live in it I'm just curious to see where we go over the next 10 years, man. It's going to be scary because eight, I mean, eight, 10 years ago, we only just got the phones. Yep. Like in 2007, yep. 2008. Yep. We didn't even have these, man. I remember, you know, you had to stop for a pay phone somewhere. Yeah. You know, now, when's the last time you saw a paying phone? You know what I mean? I don't know, man. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea when the last time I even saw. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's crazy. <laughs> but, um, you know, here's the thing. You got to adapt. You got to adapt and grow no matter what, or you're Mm going to get left behind. Yeah. Bottom line. So, you know, we're now that generation that's going to be looking down at your kids and and Mm -hmm. our kids and and be saying, oh, my God, I can't believe they're doing this. You know, these kids, they're crazy. You know, tattoos on their face. Remember when we were growing up, tattoos on your forearm were like, oh, sleeves. He's got sleeves, right? Now it's like, Sleeves, you can go get a job at the hospital. The yeah. doctor has sleeves. Four star, matter, sh- four star right? chefs at like restaurants, they have sleeves. On yeah, like, and, it's, like, and it don't matter, right? But now the matter. thing is all these kids are getting tattoos on their face. You know what I mean? So it's like it's always that next level of, you know, taking things to the next level. Culture. Each generation prior yeah. is doing it, you know, a little bit crazier or what we would see. But that's just society, right? We're evolving and we're getting further and further away from the central values that made this country great bottom line, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, I'll be interested to see what, what happens, man. Yeah. It's definitely, uh, it's, it's just culturally things just change over the year. You know, as we become, uh, we become more free things change like yeah there was a lot of hard work and people died and like if you think of like something i always think is crazy like every border whether it's like states you know in the united states or (coughs) Mm -hmm. you know i don't know south america europe people died Mm -hmm. they didn't just like draw them in the sand or like sit down at a meeting like oh this will be your you know Mm -hmm. that people died for Mm -hmm. that stuff and now we just take for maybe granted that that's what it is and like Mm -hmm. stay out of my state or stay out of People died over arguments like this back in the day that mm-hmm. we're just kind of discussing casually trolling each other with memes mm-hmm. over social media and throwing links. I don't need to explain my point. I'll just throw you a link and hope you read uh, it. The two main motivating factors in life, they don't understand a lot of stuff Yeah. that I feel like if I could even put it together in a four-hour seminar, if someone could sit down and learn the most valuable things that have made the biggest difference in my life for a hundred bucks would it be worth it to them? You know, um, I think it's way beyond worth a hundred dollars. You know, I've spent yeah, yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars on personal development seminars, you know, Tony Robbins, uh, neuro linguistic programming, you know, seminars, that goes to those all that stuff. stuff. Yeah, man. I he invest thousands and thousands of dollars to go to these things to learn. That's obviously paid off to make me a lot of money. Right. Mm-hmm. And to create a better life for me. But, you know, why not take all that and cram it into a four hour seminar for yeah. somebody so they can have exponential growth in their life? Yeah, yeah. It makes it what's really funny is like uh I guess like books originally were just I guess kind of started almost as diaries or somebody's interpretation of things. You know what I mean? Like in the beginning I have no of no clue where books started. <laughs> like, I mean, I read a little bit like Gutenberg before that they were just kind of monks were transcripting like the Bible mm-hmm. and stuff. And so there was kind of a lock on the information for that. So they were kind of scared. Uh, a lot of people like the church was kind of scared with that kind of stuff because then people can learn about other stuff outside the church. You get the wacky ideas in their head to become more like independent. You know what I mean? And, um, but it was originally people that just wanted to write writing what their experiences were and what they heard about or knew about or you know what i mean because there weren't there was a time like socrates you know wasn't reading this book and that you know there were really they were their experience probably why there were a lot of philosophers and the farther you go back or they were maybe 
you know, how to do farming or planting stuff or whatever they were doing. Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily writing about maybe other people unless they made up stories or maybe some of those made up stories were based on kind of some real life experience, but it was like a lot of personal experience. So what you're doing is, I mean, it's kind of maybe what people have always done. So it's not, you know, it's, it's good because it's your life experience. Like people take their life experience and put in a book and hopefully can help, you know, some people. Absolutely. So, I mean, if you make the most of it, you know, you could, who knows what you could get out of it. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you don't read it or you just like, oh, that's too hard then. <laughs> yeah. So obviously we were having a little bit of technical difficulties. Yeah. We're back here on <laughs> Facebook for a little bit. I know you had some questions and stuff. Yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah. Because we wrap it up in a little bit. A couple more questions. Maybe yeah. the most important ones you could find on there and then. Top three dead or alive. No, I'm just joking. Like, no, rappers. No, I was going to say rappers. <laughs> but no, I did. <laughs> let me see here. Jermaine Dupree. <laughs> Go, you can keep going while I, I think of like the most <laughs> top three rappers do you even listen to rap i, I listen to everything man i yeah. listen selectively I, I listen to things you yeah know? but it, it just depends yeah there we go again uh, anyway this ain't gonna work <laughs> oh, dude never happens we're just gonna have to dude we're gonna have to call it dude that's so crazy all right so do you want to do something are we still doing the audio the audio is still going. Well, let's finish up a couple things right. on the audio. Well, that'll be 10, 15 minutes or something. Yeah, because I can cut out all those little yeah, exactly. gaps and stuff. So let me just, you know, Facebook and who knows? I might just stop you. I'll maybe post it on YouTube, like on Facebook via YouTube, which is what I started doing. Yeah, I mean, at least you could do the first section and then just say, hey, if you want to finish this up, but, you know, go to yeah. the audio. Yeah. Put the link underneath yeah. the, the video. That's what I'll do. It's the Black Aaron Brock.